Welcome back to the DFS Special. I'm your host, your DFS Jerusalem, uh, coming to you live from the DLS. You got 150 entries, and then you're a shark, and I don't fuck with you. So, there's too much good shit on here. So, be often imitated, never duplicated. I'm here with my lovely co host. Thank y'all. Beautiful. Stay safe. Enjoy. I may have been calling in to work. <laughs> you're gonna be in the running for the snowflake of the year. Get your shit together. With your snowflake. I'm here at the crib, man, and I'm just finishing up. Uh, it's not. Uh, throw them bitches in the main. I'm telling you. You're gonna see the results, bro. You're gonna see. Just this is what's really gonna help you out. You know how I feel about the home dogs. There's a lot of fight in the home dogs, and I really think a lot of shit to go over tonight. Uh, the, uh, who that? Score all the points away. Player of the night. Get them in your lineups. Get them in there. And let's go get this one. Thursday. Let's go and remember in the sweatshop, we always keep it 300. Welcome back to the DFS sweatshop. I am your host, the DFS Jerusalem. And you can follow me, of course, on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. Tonight, we're going to be breaking down, or today, we're going to be breaking down last night's 15-game MLB slate. We're going to be talking about uh, some of the plays that we had that hit, some of the ones that missed, uh, some stacks that we were on, some stacks that we should have been on. Uh, we're going to be breaking it down, man. We're going to be breaking it completely down, man. Yo, I had a shitty night tonight. It was bad for me tonight. You know, I, and, and I, and I kind of reflect uh, from my buy-in. You could tell from my buy-in that I was going to have a very solid night because I just didn't go as far in as I normally would on a 15-game slate. It, it came down to pitching for me. I just was not comfortable, completely comfortable with pitching. And, you know, uh, due to the simple fact that, you know, there just weren't guys that I was really loving. Outside of Sensatella, man, that, that, was, that was it. Like, I, I, there's nobody that I really loved, you know, and he, and he didn't play very well. So it, it was a tough night for me. Um, saw, looked around in the shop. As you know, I am. I do got my homies with me. I'm, I'm, I got all my hitters from the uh, DFS sweatshop, the VIP. They're all here. Uh, Josh Dewey, bad night for you too. Yeah, man, it was tough. But for some reason, I just didn't go all the way in on my buying. I just didn't. I, I didn't like the pitching, man. And when I was building r rosters, you know, right close to lock after we got out of the line drive at five, I just did not feel completely comfortable with pitching. Now, I liked a lot of the bats that I had. I did. So I'm not saying, you know, uh, I played and didn't want to play. No, no, no. I liked my lineups. I mean, I made lineups that I liked. It just was a bad night. And, and that happens from time to time, right? I uh, didn't give it all back from what I got last night. That's always good. So I'm still up for the week. I'm still in, in, a, in profit mode. And, and it's all good. As long as we're there, we're fine. Now, earlier, uh, the homie man cut out a slice of his night and gave us some very solid golf info, man. I'm talking about uh, the homie Dexter Pope. That's dpope919 on Twitter. Gave us some really solid information with golf. And after this show, as I lay down next to my lovely wife, uh, once we finish doing the grown thing, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and and build a couple of golf lineups. D West, what's up, big homie? Yeah, yo, I, I'm not good yet at the show. It'll be the show. They were, like, wa watching me, like, swing at the first pitch. Uh, swing it up on the ground like it was bad I'm not very good at the show I'm really not so um, let's go ahead uh, without further ado man and jump into the slate uh, on some breakdown type shit um, 13 games in total on an all-day slate now we've got uh, an early slate you know I love the early slate that starts at 6 p.m. I mean excuse me it starts at 105 p.m. that's six games excuse me then we have an afternoon slate at four, uh, uh, four games at two, two ten. First pitch goes out. Then we have uh, the main slate is going to be at seven ten, and that is five games. You know what I'm going to tell you? If you like lineups, make some lineups in the turbos. Make lineup in the early. Make lineups in the afternoon, and throw them bitches in the main, which is the all day slate. Now, now the all day, uh, the all day buy-ins aren't like all that great. You know what I mean? It's not all that great. Uh, but, I mean, you can find some solid tournaments in there, especially when you get closer to lock and you just want to take somebody's money. They make some good tournaments, right? Is it posted in the group? Yes. Uh, this actually is being uh, recorded live, uh, not only on YouTube, but 
in the VIP. Now, at a certain point in the show, we're going to close the curtain and really get deep down into what we like. Um, but, well, if you just go to the VIP, man, you're going to see this video in there. You're going to see it. Let's go. You're just going to see it. All right? So, uh, talking a little bit about what happened last night. Uh, the perfect lineup for the main 15-game slate. We're talking about Nate Carnes. 30.3 DraftKings points. Did not see that coming. Had zero cons. A couple of cats in the shop were talking about him today. Uh, missed him. Jeff Samarja, a guy that I just don't play. I just don't play Samarja. And and, and, and it came back to, to get me. Because at 38.2 DraftKings points, he went the fuck off. He had well well over, I think, 40 on FanDuel. So it was, it was a very solid performance from him. Uh, JT Real Muto, 25 DraftKings points. Kenny Vargas, a guy that we talked about some. Uh, 25 Jeff Kings points. Jose Ramirez, 18. Jose Reyes, 22. Are we seeing a rebirth? <laughs> Are we seeing a rebirth? This is crazy for Jose Reyes, man. At one point in the early season, earlier in the season, the dude could not get up to, to uh, pass six in the order. And now, man, he's playing well. Playing well. Angelica Marie, what's happening? Right, right, right. So, what slates have all the singles? What up, Mo? You ate tonight. Good. Yo, quick question. Is this on my personal Facebook page or is this in the VIP? Because this might be on my personal Facebook page. I just saw a, a, a friend of mine that is not, I'm sure is not in our group. Hey, Angelica Marie. I think, where is this at? This might be in the wrong spot. Let me check. Yes, it is. <laughs> my bad. It's on my page. It's on my personal page. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yo, come get with me in the VIP, y'all. Let's go. <laughs> Bye, Angelica Marie. Love y'all. <laughs> how, how silly was that, bro? How silly was that? Talk about a technical difficulty, man. That was... Talk about a technical difficulty. Let's see, when you open up the app and it asks you where do you want to post the video, it should be on a group I manage. So, bam, we go to the Insider Access group here. Because if you're not my personal friend, you were not able to see exactly what I was doing. Isn't that, isn't that ridiculous? Okay. So, let's go in. Let's go back in. Let's get, let's get it together, okay? All right, take two. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, really solid performances we saw from last night. A lot of guys came out of nowhere, man. There, there were there were guys uh, last night that I had absolutely no intention of playing, and I did, I mean didn't play them for that matter. A lot of these guys went and balled out. So it was a very unpredictable night for me. Um, saw a lot of, of of guys that I wouldn't normally be playing. I mean, you talk about some margin. You talk about. Uh, Jose Reyes, a guy that I wasn't on. Seguero was somebody who had been getting in, in and out of my lineups lately, but uh, a swing and a miss for me on tonight. Really was. So let's go ahead and break down the slate. Let's talk about some. Now, I'm going to be starting. Uh, I'm just going to go with the all day because that way we're going to get a chance to get a look at every game. Okay? And we're going to briefly run through it. JT Fang, the first guy to catch back up to me. What's happening, big homie? I'm sorry about that, man. Uh... Are you here? Okay, we got you in there. Got you in there. All right, first game on the slate, man. And, you know, this is a game uh, that could rain out. Now, it's a 56% chance of light rain. It is red right now. Uh, pro probable delay or rain out. Uh, we got the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds. Um, this being one of the first games on the slate, man, in, in this spot, you know, you, you really want to be careful. With who you playing now? If you are, if you do plan on playing this game, you look at Tim Adelman. He is definitely attackable. Ivan Nova has been a guy that has been fairly good, fairly good. Last time against the Miami Marlins, put up 41.45 DraftKings points. We were all over him. Uh, also, what does TVR mean on Fantasy Labs Vegas lines? I I don't know. That's a great question. 
That's a great question. I don't know. Somebody find that out. Let's find that out. What does TVR mean? On I'm not a labs guy. I'm not a labs guy. And I and that's not like a bad reference to fantasy labs. I'm just, I'm just not a labs guy. For me, I like my I like I like my shit more user friendly. Like Swish is where I go. I like Swish. I can deal. Yo, um, and I kind of like QL because QL is right between. It's in between Swish and uh, Labs. Labs is for like the straight. Like number, I want to know if a guy drinks a cup of coffee at 2 a.m. and then plays at 6, what is his batting average against left-handed guys that pick their nose in church on Sunday? Like that is how specific and in-depth uh, labs goes, you know what I mean? Which is cool if you're into that. Swish is real like user-friendly, it's really cool, it's very easy. To, to get into it, you know what I'm saying? It's understandable. If you're a newbie, go check out Swish Analytics. It's good, right? And uh, QL is right in the middle for me. And that's where I, I do most of my work at. Did I, did I stop playing NBA to focus more on MLB? Yes. Yes. And plus, you know, you know the, the, this at this point in the playoffs, man, it's a freaking crapshoot, bro. What you doing? You're stacking. Everybody's stacking the same people. You know what I mean? Uh, usually it's like 20 points between, man, I just, I just won, I won 20 bucks on a $4 buy-in and I, I took down the whole thing. Like it's like 20 points separating you. And it's cool if you want to play it, but I, I, and we got, uh, Rhino DFS, man, the homie is really s still solid into NBA. He's been fielding most of those questions, uh, getting a lot of that information out in terms of, you know, uh, what guys you like, how you should approach it with the perfect lineup strategy that they came up, up with. So that's where we've been going really there. But uh, me, man, I've just been focusing on MLB. And wait till NFL, because we are going to tap. Oh, my God. Mm. We got some stuff waiting for y'all for NFL. But um, back to Ivan Nova. Uh, the dude scored 4.7 points uh, last time against the Cincinnati Reds. Okay? Uh, but in every game surrounding it was a pretty decent outing. 21 against the Braves. Uh, 14 against the Cardinals. Against my New York Yankees. 28. 41, like I said, against Miami. So, the dude, I mean, he's a guy that I think you may be able to take a look at. At 8.7, that's not too much to ask uh, for Ivan Nova, a guy that can play well against that Cincinnati Reds order, right? Uh, Adelman, high. Yeah, 5.7, bro. Uh, this dude, man, I don't, I, I'm not doing it. The, the Pittsburgh Bats have been pretty, pretty hot lately. And I don't think I can get there. And plus, you know, this game might be an afterthought anyway just because uh, it's a prob probable that it delays or rains out. Next game we're talking about is the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Washington Nationals. We got Braden Shipley. Can't get on the Facebook. Yeah, you can go to the Facebook now. Go, go over to the Facebook. You're good. We got it locked in. The, yeah, NBA is still Yeah, I'm sure it's still fun. I'm sure it is. And it's just I've been focusing so heavily on MLB, man. That you know, that's just that's just where I've been, you know, uh, recently. That's just where I've been. Uh, so uh, Brad, Braden Shipley at 4K uh, against the Washington Nationals. You got Max Scherzer at 12.6. I think Scherzer is playable, most certainly. Six game early slate. Uh, Scherzer is playable. Would I play him in the all day? Probably not, because I, you know, just to spread it out some, I probably wouldn't play Scherzer in the all day, but I would play him definitely uh, in that six game. Right? I do like him in that spot. Um, so, no Braden Shipley for me at all, at all. Uh, and how about the performance we saw against the Washington Nationals uh, tonight? That was pretty dope. It's pretty good. Next game we're talking about is the Cleveland Indians and the Detroit uh, Tigers. Not to take you off subject because we're talking MLB, but do you see the Eagles and Cowboys as a threat based off what happened in the draft? No. No. They, no. Yo, we done beat the Cowboys twice last year. We beat them twice. I'm, I, as a matter of fact, I should be going to Dallas week one because uh, the homie, the homie uh, Justin Durant, he plays for the Cowboys, man, and the owner of our barbershop, uh, they're first cousins, they're first cousins, and he gets tickets. So, yo, it was crazy. Last year, I was in this big toilet bowl, okay, called Cowboy Stadium, uh, Jerry World, and I was like one of the only Giants fans in the spot. I was definitely the only Giants Giants uh, fan sitting in the family seating. I was definitely the only one sitting in the family seating. I was sitting next to the chick from uh, Basketball Wives, Drea, because she dates um, one of the cornerbacks from the Cowboys, and we beat their ass. 
and, and yo, I was elated. I was so happy, bro. I was, it was so dope. It was one of the most, the greatest experiences of my life to go to Dallas and be like the only Giants fan in a group of people and we beat their ass. It was so dope. But then afterwards, I had to curb my enthusiasm because as we were leaving, uh, a few of my Mexican brothers and sisters threatened to take me to Tijuana and leave me there. So I had to be quiet on the way out, but it was all good. So um, I made it home. Next game we're talking about is the Cleveland Indians and the Detroit Tigers. Uh, this game is also probable to delay or rain out. We've got a 73% chance of moderate rain. Okay, 13 mile per hour wind going out to a right field. We've got uh, Danny Salazar uh, on the mound for the Indians and Michael Fulmer at 8.6 for the Detroit Tigers. I think both of these guys had pretty decent starts the last time out. Uh, we had 20 uh, for Fulmer and Salazar we had uh, 20 for him. So both of these guys had fairly decent starts the last time out. Never mind that, that is the train. I live on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, that's why I'm working so hard to get my family out of this shit. But it's all good, we gonna keep on moving on, man. Uh, so there's a great possibility this game doesn't even play. So I want you to, of course, curb your enthusiasm when it comes to playing Salazar and or Michael Fulmer, okay? Uh, next game we're talking about, is the Oakland A's and the Minnesota Twins. We've got Direct Jarrell Cotton on the mound for the Oakland Athletics at 7.8 and Kyle Gibson at 5.1 uh, for the Minnesota Twins. You know what, I have no interest in uh, in Kyle Gibson at 5.1, but I do think that Jarrell Cotton is kind of interesting uh, at 12, at, um, at 7.8. Yeah, the train goes hard, the train goes hard. How do you feel about uh, Brandon Marshall and do you think, <laughs> we should start our own little Giants thread, me and you, D West. You think he, he should have kept Cruz? No, it was time to let Cruz go. It was time to let Cruz go. Yo, it's one thing, as a, the New York football giants do something that I love. And if you're not benefiting the team, they get rid of your ass. I love that about the Giants. No one man is bigger than the team. You can catch the game winning Super Bowl catch, but if you go to the club and you shoot yourself in the leg, you're fucking gone. Okay? You can lead the league in uh, yards from scrimmage, total yards from scrimmage, right? You can lead the league in Tory off the scrimmage. But if you think you're bigger than Eli Manning, Tiki Barber, get the fuck out of here. You got to retire. And we don't play that shit. We don't play that shit. We don't get too attached to players or names because I'm a Giants fan. I'm not an Eli Manning fan. I'm not just a, you know, a Pierre Paul fan. When he blew his hand off and, did, and was acting stupid, let him go. Go. The team must go on. Like, I can pass the Giants down to my children. I can't, I can't pass down uh, Tiki Barber. I can't. I can't pass Tiki Barber down to my child because his career is going to be over and the Giants are still going to be playing. Quick side note. Now, uh, here we got Jarrell Cotton is kind of interesting to me at 7.8. I kind of like him in this spot. I'm looking for those Minnesota bats to kind of cool off at some point. Uh, being the right-hander uh, who can also pitch, not only for contact, man, but he can pitch for strikeouts too. I think we could take a look at him at 7.8. Of course, no Kyle Gibson there for me, okay? Next game we're talking about is the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros. Uh, this game has 17 mile per hour wind coming back toward the batter box. We've got A.J. Griffin on the mound at 7.3 and Joe Musgrove at 7.6. You know, we're going to have to at some point bite the bullet and take advantage or not take advantage of some of this uh, lackluster pitching that we're going to be seeing on this early slate, okay? Joe Musgrove at 7.6, I think is much uh, safer in my opinion than playing A.J. Griffin at 7.3. And, and by that, I mean, I'm just looking for a guy that's not going to get completely shelled. I'm going to play Musgrove. Uh, Kaheem Jones says, play Musgrove. I, I agree with that. That's kind of where I'm at with that. I can definitely play Musgrove in this spot. This game we're talking about is the Philadelphia Phillies and the Chicago Cubs. Uh, this game is also uh, has a possibility of delay or ran up, but it's marked in yellow right now at the moment. We've got Zach Eflin at 5.9 and John Lackey at 8.9. Yo, Lackey has been horrible. Lackey has not been good. He has not, he's not been good lately. Uh, taking a look, man, his last three starts ended in negative points. Negative points. His last three starts. And they were against uh, some of the better hitting teams in the league. I'm not going to take that anything away from them. They were against Milwaukee, Cincinnati, and Boston. Right? Boston's only big game they had this year offensively, they had, uh, they had against... against um, Against Lackey. Now the issue being, the issue being is, you know, nobody's gonna want to play him for that simple fact. And the price is now down at eight point nine. 
So there is merit to taking a shot at them in, in, in this spot against the Philadelphia Phillies, who are away from home, and they do uh, hit worse when it comes to them being on the road. So I'm not going to rule uh, Lackey out as a possibility. I'm just going to roll into it with caution for two reasons. Number one, the game that has, could possibly delay or rain out. And number two, he has been so bad this year. He, he, he lacked command. He lacked command in those starts. He really did. So negative, his last three starts were negative, bro. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, no Zach Eflin for me. I think you can play some of those Chicago guys without, uh, without any trepidation. This game we're talking about is the Colorado Rockies and the San Diego Padres. We've got Kyle Freeland on the mound uh, for the Rockies and Luis Perdomo at 6.3 uh, against uh, pitching for the Rockies against the uh, pitching for the Padres against the Rockies. And you know what? Uh, I have I have no Perdomo in this spot. I'm gonna take a look at Kyle Freeland. He's a left-hander, so he could get smashed. But I'm gonna take a look at him just for the simple fact that the Padres have been bad. You know, this is this is a team that you know stays. Uh, toward the the bottom when it comes to case percentage, a team that does strike out a lot, and you, you need every little bit you can when you roster a pitcher uh, like Kyle Freeland in the spot. You need every little bit you can, and I think you know he can definitely get some strikeouts and have a decent game. Next game we're talking about, and this starts the seven o'clock games is Baltimore and the Boston Red Sox. I was supremely let down by Manny Machado. He's got to bounce back in the spot. They got Kyle Kendrick. At 5.5 for the Red Sox, you've got Ivaldo Jimenez at 6.7 for the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, gotta be a bounce back. Gotta be a bounce back spot. Uh, Freeland can't strike anyone out though, and, and and that's that's the cause for concern, because you got a team that does strike out a lot, and you've got a that doesn't really strike out batters. So, you know, it's like, what happened? Yo, Machado killed me tonight too. I mean, murked me. Straight murk me. With all of that hoopla surrounding everything that was going on with the game, I thought, well, hey, guy's going to come out. Tension's going to be high. There's going to be some scoring. It really wasn't, especially for Manny Machado. Now, tonight, with two shit pitches on the mound, you've got a 10-run total in this spot. 0% chance of rain, 8-mile-per-hour uh, win. I think you can take a look at uh, definitely those Boston bats against uh, Jimenez. And, and even, I mean, this, it could be a game stack. It could be a game stack. Hey, what's been the, what's been the, the deal with all the rain delays? Well, it's weather, bro. See, it's, it, it ain't like football. You know what I'm saying? Like, football guys play. You know, this is, well, all, the, all the, the rain delays, the weather, man, it's just, it's just pretty tough right now when it comes to weather. You know, it's, it's, well, something just goes with baseball. You know what I mean? If they had everything had a dome or you know, a retractable roof, then they could do something about it, but that's just the way it is, man, MLB, you know, it's tough, and, but you got to be able to use it to your advantage, because people will get completely scared off of a game, right, now, let's just in, let's, let's check out and make sure, see who we got uh, starting, hit picture here, and this is for the uh, the Baltimore Orioles, We got Jimenez, okay. Right, okay. He thought it was, okay. I got Baldo Jimenez for Kyle Kendrick. Yep, that's what I got. Jimenez and Kendricks. Yeah, labs. Yeah, so, some sites are, are wrong sometimes. Some sites are wrong. It's just like that. Some sites are wrong. All right. So. <clears throat> like I said, you can play uh, Boston and the Baltimore Bats in the spot. Got no issue there. Okay. This game we're going to talk about is the Miami Marlins and the Tampa Bay Rays. How about the Marlins tonight, man? Hanging up 10 runs on the Tampa Bay Rays, man. That was crazy. I know you're done with NBA, but did you see the Rockets uh, knocking off the Spurs like the Jazz knocked off the Clippers? I could definitely see that. The Rockets are old, and they're tired. I mean, excuse me, the, the San Antonio Spurs are old, and they're tired. And they're just completely using Kawhi Leonard to do everything. 
And I've never seen Pop coach a team in that fashion. Never. I've never seen Popovich coach a team to where it's all dependent upon one player. And that's kind of the way that the, 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 uh, the San Antonio the Spurs are playing right now. So I can definitely see the Rockets knocking them off. DeAnthony, man. DeAnthony, man. Great coach. Great coach in a fast-paced offense. Eight and a half runs is the total for the Miami Marlins and the Tampa Bay Rays. 24% chance of light rain here. Uh, but the game is not in any danger of raining out or delaying as of yet. That 15 mile power win is big. You got Dan Straley at 9.6 and Matt Andreezy at 7.4. I kind of like Straley in this spot. I do. Last game out, he had 11.8 fantasy points against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Before that, 37 against what he should have done against the San Diego uh, Padres. 19 against the Mets. 14 against Atlanta, and he did catch a bad one against the Washington Nationals with a minus 7. So, uh, JT back leading off. I can dig that. What's up, Brad? Good to see you in the spot, man. So, I think I'm going to take a shot on Dan Straley when it comes to that later slate, that five, the, the five games at 7-10. Uh, Matt Andreezy, I think he had a pretty decent start out last time, too. Uh, little 12, 12 points. His highest of the season was against Detroit. He scored 22.5. So, you know, he's somebody you can kind of curb your enthusiasm with him. But uh, the Marlins, I think they're about to wake up and they've been playing pretty well. So you can give me some of those bats against uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. Next game we're talking about is the Milwaukee Brewers and the St. Louis Cardinals. We got Lance Lynn on the mound at 8.5 for the Cardinals and Jimmy Nelson at 7K for the Brewers. Okay. Now, uh, seven and a half run total in this game. 73% chance of moderate rain. This is also a game that has a great possibility of delaying or raining out. Uh, 20 miles per hour wind going out to a right field. Uh, 50 degrees, 81% humidity. This is going to be a tough one to play. If this one plays, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be surprised if this one plays. Uh, but I'm still going to give you a, a look at it and tell you who I like. Now, um, Lynn against the Brewers. Uh, Lynn is a guy that does have strikeout potential. Uh, 20, 26, 26. 5.8 and 12. Now, one of those high scoring uh, affairs, his highest scoring affair was against the Milwaukee Brewers. And that was away. So now he gets to face them at home. And that was during a time, like a game stack from this one, if they play, but most likely won't. Yeah, I don't think this game's going to play either, Christopher Marie. I don't think it's going to play. Suarez and Correa did me good today, but Stro show killed me. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was a rough night. It was a rough night. I think you can play Lance Lynn in the spot, or if you want to go, you know, different, a complete different direction. If the game plays, you can play a few bats from the spot. Next game is the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves. Uh, this is another one, eighty percent chance of moderate rain. So many delays, so many delays. Dang, Mo, that's the five games you gave us with rain delays. Yeah, man, uh, so many games with rain delays, bro. Uh, we got the Mets and, and the Braves. Eight mile per hour wind going out toward left field. Jaime Garcia on the mound for the Braves. You got Zach Wheeler at 9K uh, for the Mets. Don't like either of the pitchers in this game. Don't really like, yeah, Wheeler, why is Wheeler 9K? Like, did he, did he like, did he pitch a complete game shutout last time? No, he had 11 points. His highest of the season was 19.65 against Philadelphia. I don't understand why he's, why he's so much. Maybe it's because there's just no great pitchers on the late, late slate. Like, there's no, like, money pitchers. So, you had to price somebody up. You know, maybe that's the way they did it. But I, I don't want to have anything to do with Zach Wheeler. I'm good on him. I'm good on Jaime Garcia in this spot. Uh, don't really think I want to fuck with this game too much just because of the weather concerns involved. Oh, yeah. And, 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 yeah, are we going to get Cespedes back in the spot or no? Or is she still on the, on the DL? Next game we got is the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and the uh, Seattle Mariners. This is the late night hammer game at 10-10. We got Alex Myers and Ariel Miranda. Yo, pitching is suspect. This is the second day in a row. Pitching is suspect. Uh, four mile per hour winging on to a right field. 68% chance of moderate rain in this game. Uh, 74 humidity. The dew point at 63. Yo, there's a ton of games that, that are probably going to be rained out tomorrow. A ton of games. They're going to either delay or rain out. So make that part of your strategy, man. Make that, you know, uh, staying in touch with Kevin Roth uh, on Twitter, checking out MLB Weather. It's a really nice Twitter app you can use. Try to stay abreast of what's going on, man, because, you know, that's how you're going to stay ahead of the game. If you can still play some of these games that are in danger of uh, postponing or 
or uh, delaying for some reason, and people are not going to be on them. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, Seattle's a dome. It doesn't really matter. For Seattle it doesn't really matter. They can like close the domes. Uh, so uh, make sure that you're on top of this. Rumor is that Morris twins switched bodies in the <laughs> which is game. That's that's impossible. Yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy. So there's so many games, man. I, I think we counted like five games that are in really really great danger of not playing at all. We've got uh, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit, uh, Philadelphia, Chicago, uh, Milwaukee, St. Louis, and New York Mets and the eighth uh, Atlanta uh, Braves. So all of those games are are highly highly in danger of, of raining out. So stay tuned with that, okay? Now, we are about to go ahead and close the curtain, man, and jump inside the sweatshop to kind of break down the state a little bit more in depth. If you want to know what we talked about, what we broke down, the plays that they've got, the optimal lineup that we come up with, you want to know all these things, man, make it, I'll make it simple for you. Go to D, uh, dfssweatshop.com. That's where you will get everything you need to become a profitable MLB DFS player. Uh, come join us in the the closed private Facebook group where it all goes down. Uh, thank you so much, man. Uh, tomorrow, make some lineups in the in the in the other slates, the turbos. Throw the bitches in the main. And the number one thing I want you to do is keep it three hundred. We out. Let's get it in, y'all. Let's go.